Hello, friends. So this talk, we are going to uh, compare the performance of using ash map, ash table, and concurrent ash map in your application. So what are the performance impacts? So that's what we're going to do. So to facilitate our discussion, I've put together a sample program, right? Let me give you a quick walkthrough of this sample program. And this is the program that we're going to execute. And then we are going to say, study what is our performance uh, impacts, right? Okay. So here I've put together this sample, very simple application on a, you know, a simple program called as Ash Map Performance. This is a class. If you see the central object to this program is this Ash Map, my Ash Map. It is basically, it contains an integer as the key and then an integer as a value. Right. See, I am initializing this ash map in this uh, method init data. What I'm doing, I'm initializing this with a thousand elements, one thousand elements. What I'm doing is, I'm here. I'm inserting. I'm going on a loop from zero to thousand, and then I'm inserting the key. Say in this case, if I'm, when the first iteration when it comes, I'm going to put zero as the key, and the value also as zero. Similarly, when it's going to come for our next iteration, I'm going to put one as the key and the value also as, the, as one. So like this, I'm going on a loop for a thousand times and then I'm populating the ash map with the same key and value. We just, I'm building up an ash map to test its performance. So if you see the ash map, if you visualize how it's going to look in the memory, this is how it's going to look. You see, it's going to have a key, a value. Both the key and value are going to be the same, right? Okay. So now let's move on. And here I'm creating one thread called as a writer thread. This is a, this is a thread. So what is this thread is going to do is, see, look at this. Um, it's going to generate a random number. It's going to generate a random number from zero to 1000, right? Anywhere from zero to 1000, it's going to create. And then it's going to invoke the put operation on this ash map. That is what it's going to do is say, if I invoke this one method, I'm going to get a random number anywhere from zero to 1000. It could be 500, uh, 732, or it could be some number. I'm taking that number and then I'm putting it into the ash map. So the reason, uh, and I'm doing this for um, 10 million times. Like if you see, I'm, I'm, I'm going on a loop for 10 million times. The iteration count, I've declared it here as 10 million. So basically this writer thread, what does it do? Is it goes on a loop for 10 million times, and then it's going to generate a random number for every iteration, and then it's going to insert it into this ash map. It's going to do a put operation, right? And then I also created another, another thread called as a reader. What is this guy does is, he also generates a random number from zero to 1000, but he reads, say here if it comes, so it's going to generate a zero to 1,000, it's going to generate a random number and it's going to read, it's going to do a get operation on this ash map. It's going to do that for 10 million times. So if you see this writer thread is going to be constantly going to be putting, it's going to invoke the put operation. It's going to invoke the put operation and put the records. And this reader thread is going to constantly read. The reason why I'm using this random number here is so that I will exercise ash map randomly, right? Uh, maybe uh, the read, writer thread can be inserting the record 500 and the reader will be reading it in a different location. So basically I, I'm trying to introduce some randomness to read and write the records into the ash map concurrently. And if you see, this is the main method which ties down everything together, right? So here I'm saying init data, this is where that ash map is getting initialized. And then coming down here, here I'm creating a 10 writer threads. So there's going to be, we're going to spawn 10, 10 writer threads who are going to do a put operation. And then here there's going to be 10 reader threads who is going to keep on reading from the ash map. So basically we have 10 writer threads who is going to insert uh, into the insert, uh, put in, invoke the put operation and going to be inserting the records. And then here is there's going to be a reader thread who is going to be reading it, right? And then here is the logic. So it waits for all the threads to complete. And then here it prints how much time it took to execute this program. So this is the program which I'm going to run so that I can study how long it's going to take 
to execute this uh, operations, right? Is, is this program making sense? Or do you guys have any questions on this program? Yeah, um, I don't have any question. Others? Yes, understood. Understood. Okay, okay, good. So here basically, uh, we are having creating a hash map with thousand elements, and then we are creating a bunch of threads, a 10 reader threads and 10 writer threads who are going to be writing into that hash map and reading from the hash map. That's what it's going to do. So this is our program. I'm calling this as hash map performance. Similar to this, very similar to this, I have an table performance. Here, the only change I'm making is instead of using this hash map, I'm using this hash table here, if you see. All other code is exactly the same, nothing different, exactly the same code. And then here I have another program called as a concurrent hash map. So here, um, only difference is here I'm using this concurrent hash map. That is the only difference. All other code, the initialization, the reader, writer, everything is the same. So basically, I'm just modifying the data structure and I'm executing the same code. And then I want to study the performance of it, how, how much it's going to take to execute. <laughs> Do you guys have any gut feeling or anything like which would be faster implementation? Out of this, these three, does anyone want to say? Can you just make any guess which one is going to be fast? Okay, so no one wants to take guess, that's fine. So when I executed this, right? So this was the performance characteristics that was observed. So, ash map was the fastest here. Yeah. Ashmap was able to complete like the 10 million writes and then the 10 million reads it was able to complete in my machine in 3.16 seconds. And the next fastest, which is almost close, very close was concurrent Ashmap, which is 4.26. And then, but however, ash table, look at this. It took 56 seconds. If you see, it is almost like 18 times slower than ash map to complete. Ash table took eight, it's 18 times slower than ash map. So based on this study, right? Definitely ash map is the performant one, highly performant, right? But Hash map on hash map is not a threat safe implementation, friends. It's not a threat safe implementation. And if it has one scary bug, that is, if multiple concurrent threads does to do a invoke a put and then a, a get concurrently, it it will spin into infinite loop. One of, a thread can go on infinite loop, and if a thread goes on infinite loop, then it's going to trigger the CPU to spiking up to 100%. So it's not thread safe. It, it will cause outages if multiple threads starts to access it. It has that potential problem. But however, it's been claimed that it has been addressed in the modern versions of JDKs, but it's still prevalent in the earlier versions. And to learn more about this uh, CPU spike problem, you may want to look into this blog, right? Here we have documented it. Um, how, how the CPU will spike up if you invoke the hash table, right? But we'll give this link uh, in, in, the, in the video clip, right? So, but I'm not gonna go into the detail of it because it's gonna dilute the focus of this performance study. So ash map, you don't want to use it if multi, in, in a concurrent world, in a multi-threaded world. And most modern applications, I think almost all are concurrent threads execute. So you don't want to go with it. So then the next best implementation is concurrent ash map. This performance is almost very close. Like here it took 3.16 seconds and here it took 4.26 seconds. Almost very close. So you can go with it for any map-based implementation. An ash table, and one more thing to highlight is concurrent ash map is thread safe. It is thread safe. Multiple concurrent threads can do a get and a put. It won't have any, any threading issues, unlike the ash map. An ash table is also 
thread safe. But however, you can see it is very poorly performing. It is like 18 times slower, at least for this test scenario, it is 18 times slower. Um, do you guys want to know why it is so slow? The hash table is so slow. Why its performance is so slow? Do you guys want to learn yes, about sir. that? Okay. Yeah. So, is it? Yeah, go ahead, Mahesh. Go ahead, Mahesh. Mm -hmm. uh, is it because it is uh, locking the entire object? Yes, that's what it is doing. Uh, you pulled it off. It is hash table locks the entire object. Look at this. This is the so hash table. I have it, I opened it up. This is the source code of hash table. You can see, look at this get operation. This get operation is synchronized method. If it is synchronized method, what will happen? Only one thread will be allowed to execute this object at any point in time. So if one thread is executing this get method, all other threads will have to wait. So not only this get method is synchronized, even the put method is also synchronized in this hash table. Look, the put method is also synchronized. So, so look what's, what's happening in our program. In our program, if you see, we have 10 writer threads who are trying to write. And there's 10 reader threads who are trying to read, who is trying to do a get and a put, right? So that means if both get and put methods are synchronized, what will happen? Only one thread will be allowed to execute the hash table. So until that one thread uh, completes that get or a put operation, what it's doing, the remaining 19 other threads will be blocked. They won't be allowed to enter into the get or the put method. So, so it is going to be, it's, it's extremely inefficient um, implementation. So to confirm this behavior, what, what we did is, what I did was, I ran, and then I captured the thread dump of this uh, program, whatever we executed, that, that is this program, hash table performance.java, I executed this, and I captured a thread dump, and then I upload a thread to see wh whether what it's saying was really true or not. So here it is showing uh, there are a lot of threads to be in the blocked state, and here we, we have this thing called as a transitive graph. See here it, can, it shows me, see look, thing, that hash table is blocking 19 threads. Here are those 19 threads. See, this is a transitive graph which shows all those 19 threads which are being blocked. And the guy who is very at the front is a culprit guy who is holding on to the lock. Right? So, so let, let, let's look at the code. Let, let me click on one of the thread which is being blocked. So let's, let me click here. Right. See here, this thread four is coming and it is trying to do a put operation. It's trying to do a put operation. But however, we saw in the source code, in the, J in the JDK source code, the put was a synchronized method. That means only one thread would be allowed to execute. So this thread is put into the blocked state. Right. Let me click on some other thread, right? So thread 19, I'm clicking. So if you see this thread is coming and it's going to do a get. Get is also put in the blocked state because uh, there's someone, only one thread is allowed to work on the hash table. So remaining things are, either, it doesn't matter whether you do a get or a put, they are going to be put into the blocked state. So we have put into the blocked state. Now, if you see, this is the culprit guy. So this is actually doing the execution. So since this guy, until this thread, thread 15 exits, all other threads will be put into the block state. After this thread exits this get method, then one of the thread will be going and invoking the get operation or the put operation. So you can see how it, it's going to slow down, right? At, even though 20 threads are there, only one thread is allowed to progress. All other threads are going to be waiting or going to go into the block state. So that's why this implementation is very, very poor, right? In terms of performance. Um, so, the bottom line is, if at all, if you want to use uh, the map data structure, and if you're debating which one to use, whether to hash map or hash table or concurrent hash map, you may want to go with concurrent hash map because given it's thread safe and it's also performed this is uh, almost equal with hash map, right? So any uh, questions on this, friends?
Is it making sense? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you, friends. Uh, so let's uh, wrap up this uh, session.